field level and data security installation is uh, a process where we will actually write some code changes, um, but else um, it's uh, pretty simple. We will download and import the objects, I'll create a new company, and I'll run an initial source code analysis. Those things I will actually uh, be skipping in this video. If you want to see that, you can refer back to the video about how you actually install the login and permissions parts uh, of this application. But else, I'll be running the source table setup and I'll be running the implement changes in code in here. We finished the installation of login and permissions before in this database. Uh, we haven't done anything with field level and data security. But when we imported the object, we got the new um, menu group in here. And to do the initial install inside the EC security company where we ran the login and permission install, I will also run the install engine. Even if you're only installing field level and data security, it's a good idea to set up an additional company because uh, there will be data in here that only needs to be in one company and you can always restart by deleting the company if you need it uh, in a later date. To do the install, I'll open up the field level and data security setup in here. One of the companies in here needs to be the primary one and that should be the easy security one. So I'll check this install allowed in here. If you install field level and data security only, you can actually go in and select uh, a source code file name in here. And uh, then you will run the get relations from source code. Since I already installed the other part of the application, uh, I can actually reuse that data. The source code analysis done is um, much simpler than for the login and permission. It's basically linking the pages uh, to the tables inside the database in here. The next thing I will have to do is select which source tables uh, I want these advanced features on in here. And um, I will select uh, a few tables uh, inside NAV that I actually will be using um, for this uh, field level and data security installed in here. As I select the tables, um, I will uh, see out here that based on the source code analysis, I have uh, the list of pages out here that uh, needs to be modified with the code changes. But else, uh, after selecting the source table, I would need to run the implement changes in code. That process is working on top of the text file in NAV, and I would need to export that from the development environment. We have a function where uh, instead of exporting all tables and pages, um, it is a possibility to do that but I can actually mark the objects in the designer uh, so I can filter only on the one I actually need in here. So I need, uh, well, I want to mark all the one needed for implementing the changes. And I can see 79 objects was marked with DBM table number being one. This function of marking is actually um, a field. So if I go here and look at my filters. I can see there is a field called DBM table number uh, and it being one in here. So as I select that, I can see those tables I selected plus the pages that are showing them in here. To run the installation wizard, we need to export this to text in here. So um, I'm currently using a Kronos license. So if I actually try to export in here, I will see that uh, I don't have permission to that one. So I'll have to switch to a license that have access to that. As a customer, it's actually possible to have uh, a license also that can export in text, but it requires buying the first of the more uh, advanced developer modules in there. But else, I will now go in uh, and uh, I will uh, do the same filter as before for my DBM table number being one out here as the message was saying out here. I now have the same selected in here. Even with a partner license, sometimes it's not possible to export everything. And there actually is a, a trick 
to find all the one your license allow you to. You can go in and try lock these objects and it will actually only lock the objects that you have license to. And if you're running this one with a customer license, since you don't have license to a page, there's really no reason to use uh, any modifications on that page because you can't use it anyway. So at this point, I'll also go in and say, I also want all the locked ones in here. So I'll go here and I'll export um, this one now to my text file. We only need the text file, but it's always a good idea uh, to export it as a, a object file also in here, because in that way we can always reverse it. We're going to make changes to the code, but what uh, we often see is that the problem that exists was actually an existing problem in the object. So before you run it, just go ahead and compile the objects also in here. So I have now exported this one and I'm going to select this source code file in here. And that's my install uh, text file in here. As I have uh, selected the file, I need I can select them on my own computer. I could put it in documents uh, and things like that one. But the service here is actually going to open that and it's going to write another file um, directly. And that means it will require that those files are accessible by the service tier account. So typically you run this process directly on the service tier and store it in a local folder that is not associated with a user and your service tier should be able to uh, get through this process in here. But I will start the implement changes in code and that will go through and um, look through this one. Um, we don't do any changes to tables. We do uh, changes to the pages to support the field level and data security features. And as I can see, I need to change this on all 73 pages because none of them had the code in there. You can run this as many times as you want. And if all pages are already modified, you would see that zero of the 73 would actually need modifications. So in general, as you update new objects, you don't really have to care about if this code was implemented, as long as you just remember to run this implement changes in code process afterwards. So as I finish this one, I will go here and I will import uh, my text file. And I can see I have an install out uh, text file down here that is uh, resulting um, objects in here. It's now importing the pages and it will actually also import three code units. These pages can be modified or, or moved to a different uh, database. Um, there's no problem with that. Um, but always remember to also move the code units that is associated with it because it will be calling functions in them. If I go and look at the one that are uncompiled, I'll see I have three code units and I have all the pages down here. I can select all those ones and I will go ahead and compile them. Another thing to notice is in here is that the date and time is exactly the same on all of them. So if you ran this in a test database and you wanted to move the compiled objects, you will look for the date and time. It is intentionally that we don't change the modify flag, we don't add anything to the version list or the documentation trigger, because this one is not to be considered a traditional change in the way where somebody will manually go in and do something. You should more look at it like the fact that you will be importing a language um, and after you have imported it and you want to upgrade in the future, you can actually export and delete that language, leaving the code untouched in here. The same similar function about getting rid of changes is actually also a part of our solution. Again, you export to text and you run the delete changes in code function 
import and compile, and you will be ready uh, to actually use uh, any normal upgrade tools because they normally don't affect it by date and time changes in there. So as I finish this process, um, I can now go and test the application and I'll do a simple test in here. And since my EC security company don't have any data, um, I'll just open up this one and I can see right now all my menu items are here. And let's see if I, I don't think I can create a customer. No, I can't do that in here but I will see all my menu items. So to test that this one actually works, I can go to my user security setup and make a single record in here. And I'll just select the customer table and the field level security gets to be read only now. As I now go open up my list of customers, my menu items gray out. That's basically one of the features in here. It's a good test and it don't require anything except opening the customer list in here. The code were modified in here. And if I actually look at some of these objects, uh, if I want to identify what changes are in here, I can take a look at the customer list, for example, that we just looked at inside the application. If I design that one, I can go down to a proper or to a field, for example, and look at the properties. And I will be able to see there's something in here called ESACC underscore. And that is an identification that the code actually exists in that object. And this one can't be done with any customer license. You don't need a partner license to do this step. So with a customer license, you can actually verify the code exists uh, on a page if something looks uh, different in here. The actual changes in here uh, is of course the properties, um, but we also have uh, some variables. Those ones will be used for moving values from the service tier to the client that render the screen. And then there's also uh, a trigger inside the code in here, but the variables require a developer license. Uh, you can go always look at the properties with any license as uh, I will be using a Kronos in here. I locked the objects before in here and if I want to uh, clean this up, I can just unlock them again in here and that will remove that check mark uh, out here so I don't have that left over in here. But that basically finished uh, the installation of field level security. Um, and to refer to the first pieces, you will have to uh, look at the login and permissions install for the um, source code analysis and importing of objects. But basically, I uh, did the source code analysis, I entered the source table, and I ran the implement changes and code process in here.